exciting day here in downtown Fresno. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the 89th annual Fresno Veterans Day Parade. I am Alex Delgado alongside retired Marine Corps Chief Warrant Officer Dan Payne and Central Valley Today's very own Monique Soltani. It is our great honor to be broadcasting live from the largest Veterans Day Parade this side of the Mississippi. It certainly is, Alex, and it is such a beautiful day here in downtown Fresno. The crowd is going wild. It is our great honor to be a part of such a momentous occasion, respecting and remembering those who gave their lives to serve our country. Yes, it's uh, definitely a fantastic day for us all, and the veterans really appreciate the uh, participation of the audience here today. Many of the people here in the audience have family members, friends, uh, and we just appreciate all of you sharing this day with us in this celebration for all the veterans who have served before us and who are serving now. Thank you so much to all of you. You know what, it's so great to see just how many people made their way to downtown Fresno earlier this morning. So we are expecting a huge crowd and as uh, Dan mentioned, we appreciate everyone being here and without further ado, we bring you the opening ceremonies of the 2008 Fresno Veterans Day Parade and for that, we turn it over to Master of Ceremonies and United States Air Force veteran, William Dietzel. Fire. Good morning, you ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is William E. Dietzel, veteran of the United States Air Force, and I'm proud to be a veteran of America. Welcome to Fresno, California, home of Fresno Veterans Day Parade, the largest Veterans Day Parade west of the Mississippi. Long standing and historical tradition established in 1919 by the American Legion of Fresno Post 4 to honor the veterans of World War I. This year, the 89th Fresno Veterans Day Parade celebrates and honors all veterans of all wars for the ultimate sacrifice they have made to protect our freedoms at home and abroad. The American flags flying high above our parade route today were provided by Fresno Memorial Gardens, and each one of these flags bears the names of a veteran who served our nation and who has now passed. Our major sponsors, NBC KC24 and the Comcast Cable Network, Thank you for providing this live telecast. By the way, if you have Comcast cable and you have demand, turn it on year round and enjoy it. Thanks also to the city of Fresno, IQ Laser Center, PG&E, Fresno Veterans Day Parade, I mean magazine, <laughs> Table Mountain Casino, and the many, many other wonderful people who donated their time and money to make this event possible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is honored to introduce the mayor of the city of Fresno, California, Mayor Alan Autry. Our mayor is on the radio today, but I'm going to turn you over to the next mayor of Fresno, Mayor-elect Ashley Swearinger. Well, good morning, and again, welcome to all of you. On behalf of Mayor Autry, who is on the radio at this very moment, let me just add my thanks and appreciation to those of you who have served our country and to those families who have stood by and supported loved ones who have served and fought and in many unfortunate cases given their lives for our country. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today. I want to thank the organizers of this event and congratulate you on a wonderful, wonderful parade. And this morning, I pray God's blessing on those of us who are gathered here today, those who are serving, even as we speak, our city, our state, and our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor-elect Ashley Swearinger. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand at this time and uncover for the invocation given by a World War II veteran of the United States Navy, Chaplain Jack Robertson. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning and we lift our voices up to you in deep appreciation 
for providing this wonderful weather. Last year it was raining and the weather this year has been so beautiful and we know that you control your creation. Father, how can we who are human honor you who is the very God who give us life, created us, and you provided us with this parade here? We thank you for this wonderful country that you have blessed above all others. And because of that, from America's fir first beginning, our young men and women have had to, call, had to answer the call to protect this freedom. And we still have young men and women in, over in Iraq, in Afghanistan, or in harm's way. And to each one of you there, whoever you are, and wherever you are, we love you, and, and we pray for you, and we hope that soon the conflict will be over, and you can come home and enjoy the freedom that we do here in this country. We would ask all the parents here that has young children be very careful that you don't let your children run out on the street. We wouldn't want a tragedy to happen. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bill Dietzel and his crew that puts this parade together, Fresno owes them a debt of gratitude because they work very, very diligently. And, and, and I'm very grateful that he allows me to be a part of the parade committee. So you bless the people here Help us, grant us joy so that we can enjoy each other, we can appreciate each other, and again, we just thank you for being our Father, and we ask it all in the name of your Son who gave up everything so that we could live. Amen. Thank you, Jack Robertson. Ladies and gentlemen, Color Guard, present the colors. In honor of all those who served our great nation, we honor them today with the presentation of the United States flag. Today, on this Veterans Day, and for every day for the rest of our lives, let it be never said that we have forgotten our fallen comrades who paid the ultimate price for our liberty. In remembrance of these brave men and women, who gave the ultimate sacrifice and to the POWs and MIA still missing, Vietnam veteran General Dale Lucas will present the flag ceremony and present it to Rudy Giannone, World War II veteran who received the American flag on behalf of all ex-POWs and POWs. Sergeant Rudy Giannone was a B-17 waste pilot Shot down 6 18 1944 in Germany. Marched three and a half months over 600 miles west from Germany to Poland. Liberated May 5th, 1945. Returned to the United States on June 15th, 1945. Color Guard, present the colors.
The sea of white crosses. The sea of white crosses standing silent and still. Young men and women taken at the Almighty's will. Remembered in names engraved on a wall, America's best who answered a call. They walked through hell's fury we call war as they fought for old glory and all she stands for to secure freedom and liberty to those yet born. They were cheered by many, by others were scorned. A flag on a casket as they were laid to rest, these protectors of freedom, America's best. They tell what courage and commitment's about as 21 rounds of fire ring out. We pay our respect to all those who fell, going back to the crack in the Liberty Bell. On this day, let us give them our thanks to those who give their lives in the ranks, fathers and mothers, daughters and sons, give meaning to the saying, these colors don't run. A flag laying, waving gently displayed by a door. Give thanks America for the freedom our heroes died for.
Guard, retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Sounds of Freedom Military Band, directed by Monty Muir, in a special tribute to our armed forces, the Pride of America.
States Merchant Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please uncover, and for you veterans, give me your best hands. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing and join in the singing of our national anthem, led by the golden voice of Korean War veteran and Purple Heart recipient, VFW 884 Commander Henry LeMay. and bright stars through the perilous ride for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly screaming and the rocket red flare the bombs burst the sound of freedom. <laughs> Color Guard, retire the colors. Okay, we can sit down now. Oh, that gives you chills, don't it? Our parade day is so special here in Fresno. We have them. Um, 30, 40 deep, all the way down P Street, Fresno, and Van Ness. And ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be here today and say to you veterans, welcome home. United States Color Guards, front and center.
2008 Fresno Veterans Day Parade honors go to the United States Air Force. The Fresno Veterans Day Grand Marshal, Colonel Ryan A. Oren, is the Vice Commander of the 144th Fighter Wing, Fresno Air National Guard in Fresno, California. He's responsible for maintaining combat ready status of our headquarters. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Oren will take the command of the parade, giving the order for the 2000 parade to start. Colonel Oren. Thank you, Bill. Parade, attend, hut, forward, march. Let's give him a hand. Mr. Bill Dietzel for a wonderful, beautiful, and emotional opening ceremonies. We absolutely had chills up and down our spine. Thank you so, so much. The United States Air Force Color Guard, and we Ladies begin and now. The United States of American flag, presented by the 257 Boy Scout Fresno, California. Do it. fantastic display. That flag is 25 feet by 40 feet and is proudly displayed for your patriotic enjoyment. Leading Troop 257 are Senior Patrol Leaders Hugo Martinez, Scoutmaster Arnold Naples. This is from uh, Clovis Elks Lodge 2599 and is proud to charter Boy Scouts of America Troop 257. And up next, ladies and gentlemen, the Fresno State Bulldog Marching Band. marching band is honored to continue its tradition of performing in the Fresno Veterans Day Parade. The band consists of more than 280 students at Fresno State, Fresno City College, and other local colleges. It's been around since 1926. It's been a fixture in the valley ever since. Look for the band, of course, at all home Fresno State football games and at various events throughout the community. Bulldog Band wishes to express its appreciation to the members of the Fresno Veterans Day Parade and to all the members past and present of the United States Armed Forces. Thank you for all you have done and continue to do keeping freedom alive in the world. And of course, here comes the Fresno State cheerleaders and their mascot. What would the band and the school be without the cheerleaders? Yay! Here's the Air National Guard, 144th Fighter Wing and Air Force. This is an Air National Guard based in Fresno provides air defense protection for the west coast of the United States from the Mexican border to Yakaya utilizing F-16 Fighter Falcon jet fighter aircraft. The 144th also supports the nation's counter drug program and responds to state emergencies when requested by the governor of the United States and California. <laughs> The men and women of the 144th Fighter Wing have been protecting the skies over Fresno for over 50 years now. The Guard, America, defend freedom right here in Fresno. For more information about the 144th Fighter Wing, call 1-800-369-6404.
And the 144th Fighter Wing is commanded by Colonel Jonathan Flogger. Starting off this procession are members of the 144th Lead Commander Chief, Chief Michael McNiff. Colonel Ryan A. Orion is the Vice Commander of the 144th Fighter Wing, California Air National Guard, Fresno, California. He provides continuity for the 144th Fighter Wing in the base commander's absence and is responsible for maintaining the combat readiness status of headquarters group. Colonel Orion was born November 1958 in San Francisco and he graduated from Salesian High School in 1976. He attended the United States Air Force Academy Preparatory School and graduated in June of 1977. He then received his Bachelor of Science in Engineering Mechanics degree from the United States Air Force Academy that was in 1981. He completed a Master's in Aeronautical Science degree from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in January of 1987. We also have the uh, Fresno High School Army Junior ROTC Cadet Corps and from the uh, Fresno, California, Fresno High School Junior ROTC consists of over 240 cadets and three instructors. Commanding the cadet battalion is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Rodriguez and Cadet Sergeant Major Anna Hernandez. And the mission of the, of the Army Junior ROTC is to motivate young people to be better citizens essentially a character and leadership development program. Still part of it. This is a display of the uh, Air Force's capability, self-sufficient, they have their own uh, firefighting capabilities, their own rescue capabilities. Uh, the Air Force is uh, just an all-around, just not a commander of the skies, but uh, take care of things on the ground as well. It's still part of the 144th Fighter Wing, California Air National Guard. The ROTC Detachment 35 was established at Fresno State in 1948, one of the oldest Air Force uh, ROTC programs uh, that we have in the United States today. And you know, Dan, Detachment 35 is this year's Southwest winner of the High Flight Award for the best medium-sized detachment, so congratulations to them. Only four units in the U.S. can claim this distinction. Fresno State boasts the only California detachment up for national honors this year. And we're privileged today to have with us Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Vandiver. Did I say your name right? That's perfect. Uh, I have some breaking news to update what you just said about our detachment winning Southwest Region Cadets of the Year. We won national. Wow. wow. Of the year. Out best outstanding detachment in the United States, Fresno State ROTC. They just marched by, they were at the lead of the race. It's kind of appropriate. So let me get the state straight. You're number one in the nation. We are number one in the nation. On the same day that our baseball team from Fresno State is visiting the White House uh -huh. for our national championship, we get a chance to be in the spotlight too. So that's our future veterans right here in Fresno leading the way in America. And what does it mean to you to be a part of such a great success? What, it's a, it means a whole lot to them, it means a whole lot to the Valley, but the Air Force is lucky because the next generation of fighters are coming from some great, great backgrounds and a great school. So it means a lot. Now for those of us that didn't quite hear, tell us again what the award is. It's called the Most Outstanding Detachment in R ROTC for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. It's called the Right of Line Award. And Thank Fresno you. State won it this year. We were national champs. Congratulations. Thank what you. does it mean for their futures? They're going to go fly planes. They're going to be doctors and nurses for the Air Force. There's a bright future ahead for us. Well, thank you so much. Thank How you. exciting to have that right in our own backyard, Fresno State, doing such wonderful things. And next, this is who we have as a Pauley Technet uh, High School Air Force Junior ROTC Cadet Corps from Fresno, California. It's a great organization, decked out in full uniform, carrying weapons. 
All in step, fantastic. It's great to see such young children doing what they're doing, Dan. Yes, absolutely. The Fresno High School Warrior Battalion Marching Band and ROTC program here. We also have uh, just passing us as a Castle Air Force Base representation. From Atwater, which by the way closed in 1995, opened again, but uh, the original mission of course was a pilot and air crew training facility by the U.S. Air Force, so it's good to have them here. Absolutely, representing the Strategic Air Command and Control Group. Junior ROTC program. Right in front of us, we have the uh, Fresno High School Army Junior ROTC Cadet Corps from Fresno, California. Fresno High School Junior ROTC consists of over 240 cadets and three instructors. It's good to have them here with us today. Junior ROTC program. The battalion consists of about 130 purely motivated cadets, and today they are being led by Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Kel Padilla, a senior at McLean High School. Also, we have the two best first sergeants, Nara Tess, who's a junior, and Harvey Donaldson, a senior. And the battalion only works around one motto, and that is to motivate young people to become better citizens. Here comes High School Patriot Marching Band under the direction of Christine Reza. Display in beautiful flags of blue, white, and red. The band donned in uh, green uniform, just looking fantastic. And the band would like to thank the Hoover Patriot Band Boosters and the Hoover High School Administration for their continued support. Next, we have the VA Women's Color Guard displaying an array of flags representing all of our armed forces. Beautiful color guard, all in step and camouflage utilities and campaign covers. Right behind them, Dan, is the American Legion Post 4. Fresno Post 4, the American Legion, was a first Legion post chartered in California after World War I in 1917, where the Fresno Police Department now stands, which is on Mariposa Street. Post 4 became the largest post in California with over 4,000 members. After World War II, the post divided with half of its members, forming the present post, 509, on 1st Street. The Pearl Harbor Survivors Associations. Wow, there's quite a few survivors here today. Amazing history and stories that they can tell. I've heard many of them and can hardly imagine what they have endured. Post 4 commander is Charlie Waters. Charlie Waters is a very active veteran uh, in our community. Uh, he has uh, started the Veterans Political Action Alliance. Uh, he's on the home board. He was on the board for the Veterans PGA Tournament. Uh, he was a recipient of the Lincoln Day Award. Uh, Charlie Waters has just really been an active member of the community. We really appreciate him and all he does. Uh, he's a prior Marine, served in Korea, and uh, also was a part of the Marine Security Ground Forces. And coming up next, we have the American Ex-Prisoners of War, based here in Fresno. This group, group consists of World War II veterans, Korean veterans, and some Vietnam veterans. We're all very proud of them and, of course, of their sacrifices. Commander is Vern Schmidt, and riding inside the vehicle is uh, Rudy G Giannani, and uh, we talked a little bit about him. Uh, he was captured by civilians over Germany, and uh, they actually turned him in, and he went to Frankfurt uh, to Dulag Luke for in interrogation for four days and was placed in solitary confinement. 
Uh, he was placed on a train for five days and transferred to Stalag Loop 4, evacuated camp by German guards in February 2nd of 1945, and uh, was marched for over three and a half months, covering over 600 miles to West Germany from to Poland. Amazing stories for sure, Dan. Amazing yes. Stories. Right behind them, the military order of the Purple Heart. Welcome, welcome to the Veterans Day Parade. 2008, by the way, marks the 76th anniversary of the introduction of the Purple Heart Medal, first presented by General Douglas MacArthur, February 22nd, 1932, at Washington's headquarters in Newborough, New York. And now I believe, don't get me wrong, but I believe someone from Monique's family has a Purple Heart. I have to bring that up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do come from a military background. My uncle, uh, Dennis Troxell, uh, was shot in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, and he received a Purple Heart. So I'm very honored to be here today and to be a part of this parade. I, like I said, my family is all, all military, so it's a, it's a special day for me for sure. And for those of you who are not familiar, Purple Heart means these people were wounded in combat, uh, either by a shrapnel explosion, a small arms fire, uh, but uh, they're very fortunate to be with us. They uh, were this close to uh, giving the ultimate sacrifice, and we thank our corpsmen and medics that uh, are out there saving these people and bringing them back to us. So all you Purple Hearts, uh, we just thank you so much for your uh, contribution and your great sacrifice. Oh, and this 1934 Army Jeep with Marilyn Monroe, Commander Mitch Didway. Wow. Look how beautiful she looks. Absolutely. Got to get that wave down, Alex. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. a good parade Look at that. wave. Huh? I got a kiss. <laughs> yeah. I got a kiss. It was right at you, did. Oh, I think I got one, too. There a kiss you go. to you, too, Marilyn. Thank you so much, Marilyn. The commander there, by the way, Mitch Didway, Vice Commander Parker Brown, Jr. And they're riding in a 1972 and a half ton military truck. Here we have the veterans of the Battle of the Bulge. These are the survivors of the Battle of the Bulge in Germany, World War II, and their wives. Vice President of the group is Earl Watson. Larry Moe of Kerman, California are riding with them. Survivors of Battle of the Bulge. It's great to see that their wives are with them. Absolutely. These families have endured so much. This is American Legion Kerman Post 355. Uh, and uh, they also have Vice Commander Parker Brown. And they have a 1972 and a half ton military truck. This is an M35A2 with Post 355 auxiliary. Owner is Curtis Helmut of Kerman, California. If you would, Dan, tell us a little bit more about these, these, these military trucks. The, uh, the, what is referred to as a half track here has the, uh, the front wheels are driven and uh, the back are track driven uh, that'll travel over all kinds of terrain. These vehicles here are two and a half ton trucks very popular during World War II, Korea, and uh, Vietnam. They were replaced by the five-ton truck and then eventually by the seven-ton truck and the dragon wagons, which we'll see later on today. Now we have the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, post 84-99, the Nisi post. And a beautiful float uh, wrapped with stars and stripes. These are the veterans of foreign wars post 84-99. Giving us a big wave. Members of the 442nd. Now we have the International Footprinters Association. And 
the International Foot Printers Association was formed in May of 1929 here in Fresno during a convention of the California Division of the International Association of Identification. The convention was hosted by William F. Jones, Sheriff of Fresno County, with the cooperation of William G. Walker, Fresno Chief of Police, and Jerry F. Potty National Auto Theft Bureau, along with Dusty Rhodes, Sheriff of Madera County. We have the California Highway Patrol is now accepting applications from highly motivated individuals who are ready to serve the public in the state of California with pride. And if, so you have, if you have the dedication, heart, and desire to make the difference, the California Highway Patrol wants you. They receive the best training in the nation at the CHP Academy from the most knowledgeable and tactical training staff in the world. And everyone, please say hello to our Jim friend, Costa. Congressman Jim Costa. How are you? Hoorah. Three generations of family serving our country. And Jim Costa is a great supporter of veterans' issues and has always been a friend and ally uh, to the veterans, and we appreciate him so much. He's in a red fire truck with the Fredo Cis uh, Fresno City Firefighters Association President Jerry Smith. Let's welcome Congressman Jim Costa. And Jim has worked tirelessly to bring our Fresno Veterans Home to a reality and is co-authored of the Hubbard Act passed and signed into law this year. It guarantees sole survivor benefits named in honor of our local Hubbard family who tragically lost two sons in Iraq. It's good to have the congressman here. He tries to come to the valley uh, as much as he possibly can. I know he has a lot of work and keeps very busy in Washington, so it's great to have him here, especially today. Absolutely. He's a, uh, just a very honorable man, uh, full of integrity, great character. Uh, we have appreciated him so much in this valley. And next, we want to welcome the McLean High School Bagpipe Band and Dancers. They are the home of the Highlanders. Love their skirts. Oh, don't they look great? Great. They're in the Scottish colored skills, kilts. Walking in sync like that. Part of the Fresno Unified School District. that are participating in Absolutely. the Backpot Band and Dancers. Beautiful display. Yes. Pleated skirts, black stockings, red t-shirts, dancing. Fantastic. All right, here comes the Roaring Twenties Car Club. You know, I love these beautiful cars. It doesn't it just take you back to the 1920s? And I suppose that's what they're they're intended to do, right, Monique? That's for sure. The the uh, Captain Gary Jerry Eckenrod is distinguished uh, service cross Europe and Jared Craft Navy cross Iraq are riding in the first car today. And also the. 20s Car Club is carrying the people from the Veterans Memorial Museum. We also have Art Hill, who is the director of the Legion of Valor Museum, riding in this white colored uh, Roaring 20s car. Art works very hard at uh, keeping that uh, Legion of Valor Museum current and filled with, uh, with uh, memorabilia. There's Ray Lee also riding. And uh, you know, Art gets a lot of donations. One of them is from Table Mountain Casino that uh, gave them over $10,000 wow. to keep that uh, Legion of Valor Museum operational. And we certainly, certainly appreciate Table Mountain Casino for their contribution and their support of veterans' issues in the Valley. Thank you so much. What would a city be without a veterans museum? Absolutely, uh, this children. is a very unique, unique. This Legion of Valor uh, Museum means that uh, in order to be a member of the Legion of Valor, like Jerry Eckenrod, you had to have either received 
the highest medal, which is the Medal of Honor, or the Navy Cross, or the Distinguished, Distinguished Service Cross, or Flying Cross, which are all the, the Navy Cross, Distinguished Service Cross, Distinguished uh, 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 Flying Cross are all the same. Those are the two highest medals to receive. And in order to be in the Legion of Valor, you had to have received one of those medals. So we're honored to have people like Jerry Eckenrod in our valley and then people like Art Hill who keep this museum operational. Uh, it's very unique to the whole United States. And Dan, how does someone receive a medal of that high honor? Well, the, the, you know, it's it, a lot of times it says that uh, uh, heroes are uh, were only in a situation 10 minutes longer than, than other people, uh, and it was witnessed. There has to be so many witnesses uh, for you to receive a medal of honor. Uh, if there wasn't that many recipients or, or that many witnesses, then you may have received the Navy Cross or the Distinguished Flying Cross or Service Cross. So it's a, it matters as to how many witnesses were there, and then what was the uh, the height or the relevance of the the act of heroism that that was uh, that was involved in the act. Uh, so it's it's very most of the time uh, for an enlisted man to receive a medal of honor, he usually gave his life. Wow. Wow. Really, we encourage everyone to go visit the Veterans Memorial Museum, maybe even after the parade. Absolutely. It's just a wonderful thing to do. If you have children, we encourage you to take them there. And they'll, they'll be there this afternoon. This is the USS Menard APA Bell. Uh, Leslie Rutherford is a company in the USS Menard Bell. Uh, this bell has been all over the world, and uh, we're really fortunate to have it here uh, in Fresno. Uh, Fresno happens to be one of the most active veterans organizations in the United States. I know when I have visited uh, Washington, D.C., uh, President Bush has made comments uh, about our veterans organization here in Fresno and has always uh, spoken highly of how active we are and how uh, highly regarded we are in the U.S. Because of everything you do in the community or because of the number of veterans that we have here? Both. Okay. We have a, a lot of veterans in the Valley uh, that are actively serving and have served and then further go on to wear uniforms of community service, uh, whether it's in uh, law enforcement or whether it's in a community uh, serving as volunteers. The USS uh, 30 caliber Gatlin gun, uh, this is another uh, item that we're very fortunate to have here. This is a U.S. Navy 30 uh, caliber Gatlin gun built in 1901, was first presented by Leslie Rutherford to the public. In the